Now let's look at an example of multivariate analysis of variance. So consider again Bumpus' Sparrow data, which consists of five morphological measurements taken on 49 moribund sparrows, which were found after a severe storm in 1898 and then taken to his biological lab. So there were five response variables, five morphological measurements that uh, were taken and are available. X1 is the total length of the bird. X2 is the alar extent, which is the distance between the tips of the wings when they are fully extended. X3 is the length of the beak and head. X4 is the length of the humerus. And then X5 is the length of the keel of the sternum, which is the ridge along the breastbone of a bird to which the flight muscles are attached. Now you'll remember that we have access to the data on the course website. That's not the course website. Uh, the course website is right here. And uh, so this data is contained in table 1.1. And again, this data comes from uh, the Manly text. And um, let me back out here to the main web page. Uh, if you go to course data and then follow the link to the data sets for Manley's text, then you'll find the, the data set uh, here in table 1.1. Now I'm going to go back to where I was at just a second ago. From the main page, follow the link to programs and solutions for selected examples and exercises. And then follow the link to analysis of data from the Manly text. And so again, we have uh, some of the same uh, links on this page that we had on the previous, but then we've got a whole bunch of analyses here uh, that we can access that have been performed on this data set. So if you want to uh, review what the variables represent. Uh, they are given in uh, the table here. And uh, you'll recall that uh, we're told that birds 1 through 21 survived while the uh, remaining 40, uh, sorry, remaining 28 birds uh, did not survive. They passed away. Okay, so the question of interest is this. <clears throat> Do these two groups of birds, the survivors and the non-survivors, differ with respect to the means of their morphological measurements. In other words, do the means of any of these five variables differ across these two groups of sparrows? Now, while we could answer this question by performing univariate ANOVAs on each of the five uh, response variables separately, doing so would, uh, would lead to an increased overall type 1 error rate. And the reason is every time we do uh, an, an hypothesis test, and in particular uh, an uh, ANOVA, uh, <clears throat> we have an opportunity to commit a type 1 error. And so let's suppose that we were to perform uh, univariate ANOVAs, comparing the means of each of these five variables across the two groups, doing that separately. So doing an ANOVA for X1, and then doing an ANOVA based on X2, and so forth, up through X5. Well, we would have five opportunities. There are five tests there. We would have five opportunities to uh, commit a type 1 error. And so if we did each of those tests at a 0.05 level of significance, the overall type 1 error rate, the, over, the uh, type 1 error rate for all of the tests combined would be something greater than 0.05. And so that's, uh, that's undesirable. A better approach would be to use MANOVA, which would allow us to uh, maintain the overall type 1 error rate at a given level, let's say 5%, while comparing all five means across the two groups simultaneously. So that's one of the big reasons why we uh, would consider uh, using a, a multivariate analysis of variance in a situation like this. We can essentially perform all of the comparisons that we would uh, compare or that we would make using univariate ANOVAs but we do them all simultaneously, and we do them in such a way uh, that we control the overall type 1 error rate at a given level, for example, at 5%. So the approach that we're going to use in this uh, example is to perform a multivariate analysis of variance to compare the mean vectors using a significance level of 5%. Now, you'll remember in the last lecture that we said if we get a significant MANOVA, we're not done. In fact, we're just really starting uh, the analyses. So we have to decide you know, what we're going to do um, if we uh, 
have a significant MANOVA. And in the last lecture, we talked about how there are uh, a couple different approaches that we can uh, take if we have a significant MANOVA. Well, in this situation, since we only have two groups, we only really have uh, one alternative, and that is to immediately drop down to the univariate level and do univariate ANOVAs, uh, one for each of the response variables, if the, the overall MANOVA is significant. So that's what we're going to do. If the MANOVA is significant, then we're going to drop down and perform univariate ANOVAs for each response variable separately to compare the mean of that response uh, each of those responses across the two groups. <clears throat> All right, so the hypotheses to be tested by the multivariate analysis of variance are as follows. The null hypothesis is that the mean vector for the survivors is equal to the mean vector for the non-survivors, and the alternative would be the opposite of that, the logical complement, that the mean vector for the survivors is different from the mean vector from the non-survivors. Now, just so that we remember what the components or the entries in these two uh, vectors look like, the mean vector for the survivors uh, consists of these five means, the, the means of the five morphological measurements for the birds from the survivor group. Likewise, the uh, mean vector mu sub ns consists of the means of the five morphological measurements for birds from the non-survivor population. And we're going to perform this test at a significance level of 5%. Now, if the MANOVA is significant, then uh, univariate ANOVAs will be used to perform the following comparisons, each performed at the 5% significance level as well. And so now then what we would do is we would, uh, for each of the response variables individually, we would uh, perform a univariate analysis of variance that would allow us to compare the means of that uh, response variable across the two groups. So here we've got uh, the hypotheses the, uh, for the uh, univariate ANOVAs for the first three response variables, and then on the following page uh, we've got the uh, final two uh, sets of hypotheses. So this is uh, the approach that we're going to take. We're going to perform a MANOVA to compare the means of all five variables across the two groups simultaneously. And then if that MANOVA is significant, then we're going to perform individual univariate ANOVAs uh, on each of the five response variables. Now, you'll remember that, uh, in fact, let me go back here. So because this is an applied class, we're not going to be delving into the mathematics uh, of this kind of analysis. We're not going to be able to do it by really by hand uh, or uh, using a calculator. Um, it just doesn't have the so uh, software or the programs built in. We're going to rely on uh, software to do this. We're going to use uh, SAS and in particular ProcGLM. And so let me uh, go ahead and bring up uh, the uh, SAS program. Okay, so here I've got uh, SAS uh, brought up here, and I've got the, uh, let me see here, let me resize that just a little bit. Okay, so here I have the SAS program that we're going to be using to analyze this data set. And um, so I've analyzed that data set before, and so I already had the data set downloaded into a directory on my hard drive. And so what I need to do is create a libref using the lib name statement. That libref is essentially a pointer to the directory on my system where the data set uh, uh, resides. And again, notice that uh, I don't, you, when you create a libref, you do not include the file name in uh, the uh, lib name statement. You only include the path, all right? Okay, so again, I've got some house cleaning uh, statements up here, and I've got my live name statement to create my live ref. I'm going to call my live ref sas underscore data, all right? And so it, it's used uh, right here. And in this statement, I'm going to create a temporary version of my data set, and I could call it anything, but I'm going to call it the same name as the uh, permanent data set. 
And that's okay. It's, I'm not going to change anything in the permanent data set because this, this uh, data set is going to be uh, created in the work uh, uh, directory. <clears throat> okay? And so then, uh, so this, this will create the uh, temporary data set. This set statement will read that data in. It'll open up the data set and read the data into the temporary data set. And then I can uh, run my, uh, uh, the rest of my statements down below. So if I go ahead and run this, let me check my uh, log and I don't see any errors, so that looks good. And I can go over here to the Explorer, look in my libraries, go to my work library, and this will bring up the, double click on that, and that'll bring up the, uh, the data set. So I see that I've, I've imported this, or not imported it, but I've opened it, uh, created a successful uh, temporary copy of it. And uh, so now let me close that. And then I'm going to run my, the rest of my program. I'll just run the whole thing. Okay. Let me go back to the program. Let me just say right here, this is the statement, uh, the set of statements that I'm using to perform uh, the MANOVA. <clears throat> so I'm performing a MANOVA using all five uh, response variables, x1 through x5, to compare the mean vectors across the two groups, survivors and non-survivors. Okay, so uh, I invoke procglm with the procglm statement, and I tell it the name of my temporary data set that's got the uh, uh, data in it. I have to identify to procglm the variable that contains uh, the groups, or the pop or, or the uh, different. We'll just call them groups here. All right, and uh, so that's the class statement, and the variable in the data set that contains that information is group. Okay, then, <clears throat> then I issue a model statement. And in the model statement, that's where I tell uh, SAS the variables, the response variables that are going to be used in the model. I've got five response variables, x1 through x5. Now I could list them uh, all individually, x1, x2, x3, x4, and x5. But this is a shorthand notation that I can use that makes it simpler to code the program and keeps it a little less cluttered. Now on the right side of the uh, equal sign, I'm going to have the, in this case, the one classification variable that defines my groups. And that is, again, the uh, variable group, classification variable group. <clears throat> now, I've included an option here the no uni option and as the uh, as my comment says out here to the right the no uni option uh, tells procglm to not do univariate ANOVAs if we don't include the no uni option then it will do uh, univariate ANOVAs for each of the response variables listed on the left hand side of the equal sign now, that, it, it wouldn't hurt anything to go ahead and do those, <clears throat> but I, I want to try to uh, keep my uh, output um, from this procedure uh, kind of uncluttered at this point. Uh, notice that what I do down below, and we'll look at this in more detail in a minute, but down here, uh, I am going to do some univariate ANOVAs, just so you can see how we do that. But going back up here to the MANOVA, um, if we, if we uh, did not include the MANOVA statement here, uh, then uh, PROCGLM would just do, uh, try to do uh, ANOVAs, but, uh, univariate ANOVAs. But actually, since we've got the no uni option, it actually wouldn't do anything. Okay? But, uh, so anyway, the point is that in order to uh, tell PROCGLM to do a multivariate analysis of variance instead of a series of univariate analysis of variances, we have to issue the, the, the MANOVA statement. The MANOVA statement puts PROCGLM into multivariate mode. Now, we also have to <clears throat> tell it uh, which hypotheses to test. Uh, and so there are several ways that we could do this. I'm going to, let's see here, I'm going to comment that what I had out, comment that out, and let me just put it this way. 
This might make more sense. So we want the, what hypotheses do we want to test? We want to, we want to compare uh, the mean vectors across the levels of group. <clears throat> All right. So let me go ahead and run that portion of the code. And so when I do this, this is the output I get. Okay. Um, let me uh, let me let me do this here. Let me let me kind of clean the rest of this up. Okay. So you see here that. Uh, We've got just a little bit of output. Uh, it, we're told that uh, the PROC GLM procedure has run. There are two levels of the classification variable group. Uh, the two levels are labeled non-survivor and survivor. 49 observations were read into the uh, procedure and 49 were used. Now, if you've got missing data on any uh, of the variables, then the entire observation is going to get kicked out. Proc, uh, most of the procedure is in SAS. And certainly for PROC GLM, uh, they do complete case analysis. So in order for an observation to be included in an analysis, you've got to have values for all of the variables in that observation. So if any of the variables x1 through x5 had a missing value, then the entire observation would be, would be uh, kicked out by SAS. And uh, then, so then the number of observations used would be less than the number of observations read. But here we can see that it used all the data for the analysis. Okay, now here is the output uh, from the uh, MANOVA. Um, and so you have uh, a table here of characteristic roots and vectors of the uh, matrix uh, E inverse times H, where E is the uh, sum of squares and cross products matrix, the error sum of squares and cross products matrix, and H is the uh, hypothesis sum of squares and um, cross products matrix. I'm not going to focus on this right now. Uh, what I am going to focus on is this uh, table down below, the, the MANOVA test criteria and exact F statistics for the hypothesis of no overall group effect. So again, what we're wanting to do is we're wanting to perform this MANOVA. Now, the way that we're going to use SAS and to use the output, uh, when we run a MANOVA in SAS, it's going to uh, compute a p-value, uh, a p-value for the test, and we're going to use that p-value by comparing it to the significance level that we said we're going to use. So we said that we're going to use a significance level of 0 0.05 or 5%. Now, do you remember how you use a p-value in testing hypotheses? You, the, here's the way you use it. If the p-value is less than or equal to the significance level that you've chosen to use, then you reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the alternative hypothesis is true. So what we need to do is to look at the output and find the p-value for the test. And you'll see here, we've actually got not one p-value, but we've got uh, four possible p-values. Now, these four p-values correspond to four different uh, tests for this particular uh, hypothesis test. Now, that may seem kind of strange. Uh, when you do a univariate analysis of variance, there's only one p-value produced for that overall test. Right? And that's because you're just doing one test. There's only one uh, analysis of variance test for univariate data. But when you've got... Uh, multivariate data, there are actually, there's actually more than one way to perform that kind of MANOVA. And in fact, SAS includes uh, output for four different MANOVA tests. One is called Wilkes-Lambda. That's a likelihood ratio test. That's actually the one that I will almost always use. Then there's something called Pili's trace. That's another uh, way of testing the, the MANOVA. There is the hoteling lolly trace, and then there's a test called Roy's Greatest Root. Each of these uh, tests uh, are performed by SAS, and SAS will provide a p-value for each one of those four tests. Now, I know you're probably uh, scratching your head and saying, well, why, why do we have four tests? They all have the same p-value. Well, whenever you've got just two groups, the p-values for these tests will be the same. 
But if you've got more than two groups, then these p-values will be different. <clears throat> okay, well, now you're probably asking, well, if they're different, which one should I use? Well, again, they, you know, there are, there's typically uh, more than one way to do uh, certain kinds of analyses, at least in some cases there are. This is one of those situations. And uh, some of these uh, tests uh, have advantages in certain situations. Other tests have uh, advantages in other situations. We're not going to go into the details of, of the situations in which these different kinds of tests uh, might be uh, uh, preferred. I'm just going to say that I will almost always use Wilkes Lambda, at least in this class, uh, because it's a likelihood ratio test. Likelihood ratio tests tend to have good properties, large sample properties, and um, you know they're fairly straightforward. Uh, you know I just like it, so I'm going to use uh, the Wilkes Lambda uh, unless there's a compelling reason not to. And uh, there's almost uh, I almost never see a compelling reason not to use Wilkes Lambda. So the answer is uh, to this uh, question, you know, uh, this hypothesis test. Is there sufficient evidence to conclude that the mean vectors differ across the two groups? Well, the p-value for this test is 0.7622. All right, that is not less than or equal to 0 0.05, and so we would fail to reject the null hypothesis. And so, from from based on this analysis, based on this uh, type of comparison, uh, what this tells us is that the two groups of sparrows, the survivors and the non-survivors, did not differ in terms of the, the, the mean vectors, the, the means of the five morphological measurements. Okay? And so there's really, so because of that, uh, we would not want to uh, go on and pursue looking at univariate uh, ANOVAs. All right? The only time that we would uh, pursue uh, looking at uh, or performing the univariate ANOVAs would be if uh, the MANOVA was significant. However, <clears throat> for the sake of showing you how to do it, I do want to go ahead and show you uh, how you would follow up if that test had been significant. Okay, and so that is why I've got uh, uh, this, uh, these statements down here to perform the uh, univariate ANOVAs for each of the five variables. So let me just run everything here. And so up, up here at the top, I've, again, I've got my MANOVA. And then down below in the output, I've got the individual univariate ANOVA. So this would be the ANOVA for variable x1, the total length. Below that, I would have the ANOVA, the univariate ANOVA for uh, x2, the alar extent. Below that, I have the univariate ANOVA for x3, the length of the beak and head. And then finally, well, actually, I've got two more, X4. This would be the ANOVA for X4, the length of the humerus. And then finally, the uh, fifth ANOVA uh, for X5, the length of the, sternum, of the keel of the sternum. Okay, so let me go back up here to the, the first univariate ANOVA. <clears throat> so if it were, if it had turned out that this MANOVA was significant, we would want to, go ahead and do these ANOVAs. And so what we would do then is perform each of these tests. Let me go back to uh, the uh, slide here. We would go back and do each of these tests at the same significance level that we did the MANOVA. So I would do this ANOVA at a 5% level, this ANOVA at a 5% level, this ANOVA at a 5% level, and each of these at a 5% level. And so uh, this ANOVA, uh, this first set of hypotheses, is tested by this first test here, this first ANOVA. And what we would look at is that p-value right there. Now, again, uh, we're just kind of, uh, I'm just showing you the procedure that you would go through. G given that the MANOVA is not significant, you know, we, uh, we would not want to do this because then by doing this, we actually increase our overall type 1 error rate. Okay? But... Uh, I just want to show you the process. So we would uh, look at that p-value, and since that's not less than or equal to 0.05, we would 
fail to reject the null hypothesis that the mean of, the, of x1 is different across the groups. We would then go look at this uh, ANOVA. Since that p-value is not less than or equal to 0.05, we would fail to reject the null hypothesis that the LR extent, that the mean LR extent differs across the two groups. We would then look at this p-value, and because that is not less than or equal to 0.05, we would fail to reject the null hypothesis that the uh, x3, the, the mean x, the values of x3, length of the beacon head, are uh, the same across the two groups. And then uh, we would look at this p-value, uh, 0.76460. That's not less than or equal to 0.05. And so we would fail to reject an all hypothesis that uh, the mean value of x4, the length of the humerus, uh, is not different across the uh, two groups. And then finally, we would look at the fifth p-value for the fifth test. Uh, that's not less than or equal to 0.05. So we would fail to reject the null hypothesis that the mean of this variable is the same across the two groups. And uh, so th that's the process you would go through. Now, because the uh, overall MANOVA was not significant, it's not surprising that none of the individual or univariate ANOVAs are not significant as well. But however, let me just warn you that it is possible. Sometimes you will see a situation where a, a multivariate analysis of variance is not significant. But if you look at the uh, univariate uh, ANOVA results, you may find significant differences um, for one or more of the variables. And the reason is, if you have just a few, uh, you know, a, a, few, a small number of, of variables that are significant, uh, or a small number of univariate ANOVAs that are significant, but several other ANOVAs that are very non-significant, then the non-significance uh, can kind of swamp uh, the, uh, the signal that's being detected in the individual tests and, uh, and therefore make, uh, make, make it difficult to see from the multivariate level. But you would, what you don't want to do, <clears throat> as a matter of practice or principle, what you don't want to do is do a MANOVA and then if it's not significant, you don't want to bypass it and go down and do the univariate uh, ANOVAs. And again, the reason is, uh, once you do that, then your overall type 1 error rate uh, has increased. You don't have that type 1 error rate protection. If you insist on looking at the univariate ANOVAs, uh, even when the uh, MANOVA is not significant. So anyway, the reason I'm showing you these univariate ANOVAs is just to, just to show you the process. Uh, uh, because this uh, multivariate uh, analysis of variance was not significant, uh, from a, an inference standpoint, we would not proceed uh, to look at the univariate ANOVAs. Okay, so that is uh, an example um, of how to use MANOVA. And uh, if you go out here to uh, the website, I do have a link to uh, the results from the MANOVA. And so you can look at those, look at those results. You'll see the same results there. Uh, underneath that, I've got results for the univariate analysis of variance. And you can look at those results. And they're uh, uh, the same p-values. I've included some graphics here so that you can see that as well. Okay, uh, but take a look at that. There's actually a SAS program for each of those. Uh, actually, that one's not out there right now. This one is. But um, I'm going to, what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, post this program on Moodle for you so that you can uh, download or copy of the program and run it yourself. So that's it for this video. And we'll, uh, in the next video, we're going to talk more about uh, uh, MANOVA and look at uh, an additional example that is in the SAS course notes. So if, uh, one thing I would recommend is start reading the SAS course notes on MANOVA. This is in Chapter 2.